It's my relationship with God, uh, things that I've learned. Uh, and yeah, so yeah, um, <clears throat> first of all, I just want to start by asking everyone, uh, what does the word uh, a dynamic mean? Does anyone know what dynamic means? <clears throat> uh, sunshine? Yeah, exactly. It means movement, right? What is the, is the opposite of dynamic? Static, okay? So dynamic, <clears throat> it means movement, right? And the dynamic duo between me and God, it means movement. It means there has to be give and take. Does anyone know give and take? Yeah? Hands up if you've heard of give and take before. Okay, cool. Mostly everyone. So yeah, give and take is... Uh, it's giving and taking. It's giving and taking. Both uh, both partners, uh, they give and they take. They bounce off each other. I could go into into the scientific part of it, but I don't want to, honestly, because I don't really know much about science. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, give and take. Uh, a given a take it causes uh, the energy to be made, which can be be able to translated into love energy, and then the more give and take, the more love is produced. Right? Okay, that's just a little explanation. So, <clears throat> yeah, first of all, just want to speak about what my relationship with God was like uh, as, a f as a child, as a five-year-old until 11-year-old. Um, yeah, you know, at, at that point in, in, your, in our lives, we're just receiving love from our parents right, and our family. We're just receiving, we're not at a stage where we can give a love because we don't understand the concept of, sh uh, of sharing or giving as much. So it's really just us receiving love, right? And then, as a teenager, we get to, to, to a point of more understanding, more understanding of how the world works, of how relationships work, and then we use the love that we've gained from a child to then to share with other people and build relationships and build stronger relationships. So, yeah, it was like this with me and God as well. Um, with God. You know, as a child, of course, I didn't really understand the concept of God. I just, I thought he was a big man with a beard who makes all the choices, what happens in the world. And then, uh, uh, as I grew older, I, I, I realized, you know, more about God. God is a spiritual being uh, manifested in us as people, in the creation, uh, physically. Um, and yeah, and then I... I was taught and I, I learned for myself that I have to give to God. I, I have to have a given, take relationship with God in order to, to, to really understand him. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> now, I just, uh, I think recently, how has God worked in my life? Like my teenage years, how God, God worked in my life. Um, and I guess there's two, there's two ways, I guess. There's like uh, the ways I can s see it physically and the way I can s see it internally how God has worked. So physically, uh, I can give examples of how I believe God has worked in my life. Um, for example, when I was in year seven, uh, my first year of high school, I, I was not knocked over by a car. And actually, the car was, uh, that's jokes, is it? No, <laughs> no, um, no uh, uh, luckily, I survived, in case you couldn't tell. But, um, no, yeah, I was knocked off by a car. The car was going pretty fast. It, it was my fault. I, I, I was pretty stupid back then. I just ran in front of the road uh, when there was a green light, and I got hit by a car. But luckily, uh, I wasn't hurt very much. I, I just uh, I sprained my, my knee a little bit, and that was it. You know, I, and I felt actually, you know, uh, uh, God, I felt like that was God in my life. And eternally, you know, I've, I felt God has helped me a lot, uh, growing, uh, connecting to people, because I, when I was younger, I actually really used to struggle with connecting to people. Like, I, I didn't 
really care for people much, care for friends much. But yeah, with God's help, I you know I became more more of an open person. Uh, just to briefly go over that, but yeah. So also, I want to speak about how God works in life. Like, does God? Um, I think. Can you get the video ready, Kaz? Like, yeah. Does God like? Does He make this, make things happen uh, for you? Does he, he? He kind of did God put His hand in front of the car and, and make it slow down a little bit? Does God, you know, give us uh, things on the platter? Well, I I saw this video. Uh, has anyone seen uh, even our Almighty? Yeah. I'll give, I'll, by the way, I gave this talk in the South London Harp, but yeah, I'm going to show this, this, this video as well. But it's not the same talk, so don't be like, be stressed out and worried about it. It's going to be a boring sermon, because I, I, I've, like, I've updated it and upgraded it. But this is, this is the same video, and this is an idea of how God works in your life. Like, I really enjoy it, so... Oh, excuse me, can I get a refill, please? Coming right up. Excuse me, are you all right? Yeah. No, it's a long story. Well, I like stories. Tell me a little bit louder. I'm considered a bit of a storyteller myself. My husband? He heard of New York's Noah? <laughs> the guy who's building the ark. That's him. I love that story. No one in the ark. You know, a lot of people miss the point of that story. They think it's about God, wrath, and anger. They love it when God gets angry. What is the story about then, the ark? Well, I think it's a love story about believing in each other. You know, the animals showed up in pairs. Mm -hmm. you know, they stood by each other, side by side, just like Noah and his family. Everybody entered the ark side by side. But my husband says, God told him to do it. What do you do with that? Sounds like an opportunity. Let me ask you something. If someone prays with patience, do you think God gives them patience? Or does he give them the opportunity to be patient? If they prayed for courage, does God give them courage? Or does he give them opportunity to be courageous? If someone prayed for the family to be closer, do you think God zaps them with warm, fuzzy feelings? Or does it give them opportunities to love each other? <laughs> I gotta run. Oh, they Black think people are so good. So, things that make you say, mmm, right? So, yeah, just a little backstory I probably should have gave it before, but it's, I think it's still. But, uh, yeah. So uh, even on Mighty, it's basically about this guy called called uh, even, and he gets the job by God to, to basically be the modern day Noah. So he has to build an ark. Um, yeah, he has to build an ark, and he had a family who's gone through uh, issues of being close to each other, and then of course, if a guy has to build an, uh, an ark in the modern day society, now people are going to judge him and think that he's crazy. So his, his wife was really struggling to, 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 to believe him and to understand him. And Morgan Freeman playing God, because who else would play God, um, he, he uh, uh, met with Noah's uh, uh, even's wife, and he kind of he gave a bit of uh, a bit of guidance. So, yeah, I, I really love this video. Uh, that's why I've shown it um, a lot of times because it really, I, I think, I think it, for me, it's a very accurate description of how God works. I, I, I think that God, you know, uh, if we pray for something, God doesn't make it make that thing happen. He doesn't. It, give you um, a million pound if you pray for it. But I do think that uh, if you pray for like for 
I could be more patient as a person. God will put you in a position for you to grow as a person and become uh, a more patient uh, person. So God gives you the tools and the environment and the understanding to make your own prayers come true. So, yeah, that's how I think God works. And um, that brings me to the next point of, of why a life of prayer is so important. Because, um, yeah, can I just ask everyone who prays at least once a day? Hands up. If you don't, it's okay. If you don't, you don't. Okay. Sorry, again, a phone call from my mum there. Sorry, mum. Um, uh, yeah, so, so yeah, uh, a life of prayer, for you, I mean, my life is very important because it, um, it's shown that when I've had uh, periods in my life where I didn't pray at all, I, I didn't think about God, I didn't speak to God, it was just very, I felt, I felt very, I guess, empty is the right word. I, I, for me to, to explain it, I felt like there was a link in my life that wasn't connecting to, to, to the rest of my life. And, and then I realized that actually it's important to pray just because of God as well, just because God wants us to, wants us to speak to him. God wants to know that we think about him throughout the day and that we're working on him. Uh, on ourselves, and we want to uh, to share it with God. Uh, and also in the Bible, uh, has anyone ever read the Bible? No. Okay. Well, I recommend you you do because uh, through the reading of the Bible, you can understand a lot about uh, our, our church and the, the, the divine principle, and also just the course of history as well. But uh, yeah, in the Bible, God even He says to Moses. Um, one of the commandments, uh, thou sh shall not worship any gods uh, besides myself. Not those exact words, but basically. Because I am a, I am a, a jealous God, okay? I thought this means that God, he wants our love, he wants the love that we have. He doesn't I want to, uh, to share it with any uh, uh, false gods or false kind of things that, that people uh, they idolize and they put um, above themselves. Right? God really wants our love. <laughs> so we have to share it with God. We have to let him know that, you know, we do love you. Uh, even if we're struggling with him, that we still him with God that uh, we still care about him about God and uh, and we we still just want to have that dialect with with God and also in my in my life it made me feel a lot more uh, uh, less alone uh, like I had a friend I had a, uh, like another parent that I could speak to. And, and not feel judged, not 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 feel misunderstood. Just being able to share was a uh, really important in my life as well. <clears throat> so, excuse me. Yeah. So. Um, <clears throat> yeah. There's been times where it's been hard for me to pray because I didn't feel like uh, God, God was there, like God, God was with me at the time. I felt left alone. Um, but I couldn't understand being able to have this feeling, but then uh, knowing that God is, uh, you know, uh, that God is always there. God is, is uh, Omnipresent. Uh, I couldn't understand it because I felt I didn't 
feel God, but I knew he was there. And then I was thinking, is it me personally? What am I doing wrong? Uh, and then I realized uh, that's exactly it, right? God, God never leaves us. It's just how we do things in our lives that block ourselves from feeling God's love. So, 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 so for example, if, if you're, uh, you're doing uh, things you're not meant to be doing, like, like, like sitting at home, for example, or arguing with your parents, brothers and sisters, you know, you're going to be, uh, you're the, that's the way that you are blocking yourself from receiving God's love because uh, those things are, are not uh, uh, one of the characteristics of God. So doing anything that's not in God's, character, God's characteristics is going to block you from receiving that love. So I suggest that you always be evaluate yourself and reflect on yourself. You know, am I doing anything that is blocking me from receiving God's love? And once you do this, you'll you'll really uh, feel more connected to God. I think in my experience as well. And you won't blame God as much, but you're realizing in yourself the things that you're doing wrong, and you'll grow and how to change those things as well. So, <clears throat> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Has anyone heard of uh, the 95 percent responsibility that humans have? Yeah. All right. So there's there's a theory, but I I, I believe it to be th be true. But there's there's a teaching that our movement has, which is a uh, God takes ninety five percent of responsibility of things that, of things that happen of our, of our life of of the providence, and we have five percent responsibility. Uh, so this means that God, he takes uh, most of the burden and we just have to do our part, right? To match up with God. Um, but this 5% uh, can be taken as like, oh, okay, uh, you know, I have this, this uh, small portion, you know, I don't have to do as much, God's already done most of it already, I just have to do the bare minimum. But actually, uh, this 5% responsibility, to, uh, uh, this takes 100% of our uh, dedication uh, and of our effort just to match up with God, because if we just do the 5% responsibility, just like uh, doing the bare minimum, then it's not going to have the effect on our life. It's not going to have the meaning of what God intends it, it, it to mean. So, uh, excuse me, everyone. Someone's just sleeping. Bang! Morning. Hello? <laughs> All right. No. Welcome. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. Um, so, in our life of faith as well, God always... He, he always, um, he's always investing 100% uh, uh, non-stop, 95%. Uh, um, but we have to, in order to, to feel God's investment and to make it mean anything, we have to do uh, however for 5%, uh, but 100%, you know, always investing into God and then make it uh, uh, a really meaningful uh, a relationship, make it really dynamic and not static, not uh, not stagnant, just like staying still for a long time, just always God investing, because that's not what a real relationship is, right? If uh, me and Atchan was at uh, Atchan's house and he, he was uh, 
uh, being a nice host, just always giving me food, always giving me drinks uh, and games to play. And I was just uh, there, just on his bed, just lying down, just shut like, oh, thanks, Hatchin, thanks, thanks, you know. <laughs> Uh, then uh, Hatchin would just, he'd be really upset, right? He would, he'd be like, oh, what's this guy doing? Like, I'm doing everything I can, I'm being a nice host, you know, I'm, I'm giving him all, all my Krispy Kremes, all my, all my rice cakes, or whatever. And, and like, it, it's not fair, right? So it's like this with God, but except God, isn't it? He never loses. I have faith, he never loses, he never gets bored, he never gets upset. But he always has the longing that we will invest 100% into our 5%. So, uh, does everyone understand what I've said up to this point? Yeah? Alright. So, <clears throat> Yeah, this brings me to a story, another Bible story, because I like the Bible. They've got a lot of teaching in the Bible that are really good. I really recommend it. Um, but yeah, it's a story of a fisherman uh, uh, on a boat, and he's drowning. Has anyone heard this story? South Londoners should be putting their hands up, because I said this in the talk, but all right. But yeah, okay, uh, there's this man, a fisherman on a boat, uh, and his boat at has a hole in the boat. And he prays to God, he says, God, I'm drowning, please come and save me. I need help. And then a few minutes go by and the boat has sunk uh, a few meters more. And then um, a, man on a, a man on a fishing boat, he comes and he says, Oi mate, are you right? And he says, no, I'm drowning. And then, <laughs> And the other fisherman, he says, oh, I'll come on my ship then and I'll help you. And he's like, no, no, I'm waiting for God. He said he'll come and help me. And then uh, the guy's like, all right, mate, I mean, God's not here, but I am, you know, for sure. All right. And then he, uh, he goes off. And then a few minutes later, uh, the fisherman is still dead sinking, drowning on his ship, and his sh ship has gone down even further, you know, now it's up to his ankles. And then uh, a dolphin comes by, uh, and the dolphin's like, <laughs> I, I don't know what a dolphin <laughs> sounds like, but it's like, oh, mate, are you right? Uh, I think she, uh, your shoes are a bit wet. Are you drowning? And it's like, yeah, I'm drowning, but God's going to come by, you know. <laughs> I asked God to come, and he's going to come, you know. Because I have faith, right? And then the dolphin's like, okay, fine. And then he swims off. And then a few minutes later, now this, this guy is about to die, you know? It's it, 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 to his neck. He's like this in the water. He's getting uh, uh, really tired. And then uh, a bunch of seagulls come by, right? A flock of a flock of seagulls come by, and they say, brr, brr. "All right, mate, are you right? Uh, want some help? We can uh, fling you down a piece of uh, a string, and you can uh, hold on to us as we fly as a group, and we'll save you." <laughs> and then uh, this guy says, "No, no, no! He's like, Just go away. I'm fine. God's gonna come and uh, and." Uh, help me and save me because I prayed to him and I have faith in God that he's going to come and save me. And then the, uh, uh, the birds go, brr, brr. all right, fine. Uh, uh, good luck. Uh, see ya. <laughs> and then five minutes later, the guy drowns and we're in the spirit world. And then uh, the guy, you know, he's standing at the gate of the spirit world to go into heaven and Saint Peter's there at the gate and then he says um, he says uh, oh fisherman uh, I, I thought you survived you know uh, I'll be sent uh, like a few people to, 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 to come and help you because you prayed you know and you're sincere and you have faith and then the fisherman he's like I know God never came, I never 
saw God, so I drowned in the end. And then St. Peter, he said, no, we sent you. He three messengers, three helpers to come and save you. Uh, the fisherman, uh, the dolphin, and the birds. Uh, and then he was like, oh, no. I was waiting to see God. I'm sorry. And then the same Peter, he said, okay, go to hell. <laughs> no, 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 I'm joking, never said that. But I never said that. But this is a really good story because uh, of course, in the Bible, it's not phrased exactly how I phrased it, but this is a really good story to, to show us how God can help in our lives and how we miss God's messages sometimes, how we miss the help that God has given to us because we have expectations or we're blind or, or we're doing things that, that are blocking us from being able to understand God's heart and how he, he's helping us. So I really like that story and like I said already I read the Bible because there are a lot of good messages in, that, in, in, in the Bible. So yeah. God wants us to, to, to seek him and to really um, invest our lives into, into understanding God's heart um, and, and to finding our what God feels and really understanding God's love and heart. Um, and you know, to, to, uh, the only way we can understand uh, uh, anything is to really uh, to study it, to invest into, uh, uh, into learning more about it. So this means for really, uh, uh, like the DP gives us a lot of, um, a lot of guidance and things to try, for example, living for the sake of others. I'm sure that's something that you, we've all heard. Or, you know, there's a lot of things just like this is to really to, to practice the, the heart of God and, and to really grow ourselves into loving. But we can only understand God if we try, right? We can't just live our lives and hope that one day we'll understand God just, just, just by going along standard Dudley and doing the norm. So we really uh, we need to turn best if we want to uh, uh, really understand God's love. Um, yeah, I just want to uh, end off by um, by saying you know, there'll be the, uh, God will wants us to really uh, to challenge us, uh, uh, God and ourselves. He really he wants us to go deeper. And if you are uh, struggling with God, to really um, uh, to challenge God and to say, God, where are you in my life? You know, why can't I feel you? Why can't I relate to you as well as I can with, uh, with my parents or my brother or my sister or my friends? Why can't I? I really feel you, and you know God won't be upset if you get uh, upset at God, or if you get uh, angry at God. God wants you to express yourself to Him or to her, to God, because you know that that is that is the only way we can really understand God, and God can understand. Her how we f we feel so so that's uh, I don't know where to make it a more really a dynamic of, uh, a relationship of give and take of really uh giving your heart to God whether it's a heart of joy or or a heart of uh, uh, a heart of uh, sorrow but, but then also being Really to, to, to go deeper into that relationship and really un understand, you know, why can't I feel God? What am I doing wrong in this moment? And that is the only way we can really be a dynamic duo with God. So thank you for listening. I hope you did get something from that. Um, yeah, uh, have a good day and have a good week, everyone. Thank you.